In example 6, we want to find any critical numbers for this function by hand, showing all work, verify our results graphically. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find the derivative because the first order critical values are going to be places where the derivative is equal to zero or where the derivative fails to exist. So I'm going to look for both of those. So derivative first of all, this is going to require the product rule. I'm going to rewrite my function as x times 4 minus x to the 1 half power. So product rule, if I do the derivative of x first, that's 1. Leave the 4 minus x to the 1 half power alone, plus leave x alone, multiply by 1 half, and then I have my 4 minus x to the negative 1 half power times the derivative of 4 minus x, which is negative 1. So if I simplify, I have 4 minus x to the 1 half power minus 1 half x times 4 minus x to the negative 1 half power. Okay. So I need to set this equal to 0, and I also need to find out where it fails to exist. So first of all, setting it equal to 0. So f prime of x equals 0 gives us 4 minus x to the 1 half. I'm going to put this in the bottom so that I can uh, work with it a little more easily. I have x over 2, 4 minus x to the positive 1 half, equals 0. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is add this to the other side. So 4 minus x to the 1 half power equals x over 2, 4 minus x to the 1 half power. Then I can multiply this denominator over to the other side. So it gives us 2 times 4 minus x to the 1 half plus 1 half is 1, equals x. And then we can distribute 8 minus 2x equals x, or 8 equals 3x, so x is 8 thirds. Okay. So we've got a critical value at x equals 8 thirds. Uh, 8 thirds is a little bit bigger than 2 less than 3, and so 2 less than 3, this could be 8 thirds. So graphically, at least so far, we're lining up where this might be 8 thirds. Um, and then let's look at the places where the function fails to exist. Okay, so it's going to fail to exist. Any places that you have a denominator that's equal to zero, I do have a denominator over here. So that portion of it, the denominator, if I want the denominator equal to zero, that gives me uh, 4 minus x equals 0, so x equals 4. And at x equals 4, right over here, that is a candidate for an extrema, although that happens to be an endpoint, so it's not going to be an actual critical value. If I wasn't looking at the graph, I can tell that it's an endpoint by examining the domain of the function. So the domain of f of x is, um, if I plug in a number larger than 4 into the function, it makes it undefined. So the domain is negative infinity to 4. And again, you can see that that's an endpoint to the domain and therefore is not uh, possible to be a critical value. So I only have one critical value. Okay. So verify my results and label my results in the graph. This is our critical value. Could C for critical value. X equals 8 thirds. And we do have an extreme at that critical value. Remember that our critical numbers are candidates for extrema. In this case, it happens to also be an extrema. Sometimes they won't be, they'll just be candidates. Okay. But in this case, it is both an absolute max and a local max. Or relative max, absolute and relative. Now, how do we tell if we've actually found an absolute max or a min from our critical values? We're going to need to test them. So the first thing I want to do is find the domain, because like we saw in the last one, 
if I don't know the domain, then I can't tell if I have, without a graph, um, reached an endpoint or achieved a value that's not possible. So find the domain. Then find the derivative, because you're going to need to locate the critical values using the derivative, setting equal to zero, finding out where it doesn't exist. Now, uh, this is the procedure for finding absolute maxima and minima. So they're going to not just look for the locals, we'll have to look at a test in the next section for locals. This is just for the absolutes. So for the absolutes, I just need the y values. And so I want to evaluate f at the critical values and at the endpoints, because remember you can have absolute endpoints to get your y values. Then we're going to choose the smallest and largest to be the min and the max, and then we'll have the extrema at their ordered pairs. Okay, so let's take a look at the absolute mins and maxes of this function. I'm going to rewrite it first. So f of x is 1 fourth x to the fourth plus 1 third x to the third minus 3x squared plus 10. And it's going to be on negative 4 to 4. So in step 1, the domain has been restricted to negative 4 to 4. So I'm only going to be looking for critical values on that interval. Then I'm going to find the derivative. So the derivative is 4 times 1 fourth, which is 1, x to the third, plus 3 times 1 third, which is 1, x to the second, 3 times 2 is 6, x plus 0. Okay, so that's my derivative. Step 3, locating critical values. So I'm going to start with finding places where the first derivative is equal to 0. So it's factorable, so I have x times x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0, so that's x times x, sorry about all the background noise, uh, that's x times x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals 0, and then we can set each of those equal to 0. We get x equals 0, and x equals negative 3, and x equals 2. Okay, so that gives us three critical values. They're all in the domain, so they all get to stay. We also need to look for places where the first derivative fails to exist. That's usually denominators equal to 0. I don't have any. There's going to be none because my derivative is polynomial. There's no places where it fails to exist. Okay, so I have three critical values, and now I want to test which of these is an absolute extremum. So I'm going to take in step four, we're going to evaluate the endpoints and the critical values into f. Remember, we're using y values, so we're going to plug them into the original function f. So I want f of negative four, f of negative three, f of zero, f of 2 and f of 4. The original function, way back up here. Okay, so I'm going to plug in 0 and it get 10. And I'm going to plug in the rest of them just a second here. So f of negative 4, um, 14 thirds f of negative 3, f of 0, we already did, f of 2, and f of 4. Okay, so I'm going to write down these values. We've got 4.67, negative 5.75, we already knew our 10, 4.67, and 47.33. So, to find the absolute min and maximum, we want the biggest and the smallest. So, because that one's negative, it's the smallest to short, and the 47 is the largest. So that means that the ordered pair negative 3 comma negative 5.75 is the absolute minimum. It's also a relative minimum because it's at an interior point. Okay, so it gets to be both. And then the ordered pair 4, 
47 and one third. I know it's a mixed number, which is kind of awkward, but that's okay. Uh, and that is a absolute maximum. It had an end point, so it could not ever be a relative maximum, just absolute. This one got to be both because they had an interior point. It's between the two end points of negative four and four. Now the rest we can't yet classify. I don't know if this is just from the absolute value um, test for absolute extrema. I don't know whether 0, 10 or 2, 4 and 2 thirds is anything significant. We'll have to have another test for that which comes in the next section.